car for pleasure and business in the big city. The problem was real enough, so men began to plan. General Motors Holden executives made complete investigations of Australian conditions. Specifications went to the American research laboratories, and the world's leading automobile scientists set about producing the car to meet Australia's needs. This model represents months of research, work and testing. At GMH headquarters, Fisherman's Bend, Melbourne, the miniature is studied in detail. Then, from the United States comes the first full-scale model, the prototype, handmade for complete road testing under Australian conditions. With it come designers, engineers and technicians, experts to watch its performance. An 86-mile test route is chosen. Over this course, experimental cars are driven daily for nearly two years. A continuous, ruthless test, probing for any weakness, however slight. Over winding mountain tracks to prove maneuverability and handling qualities. Through heavy dust on rough bush tracks. In driving rain over slippery roads. Over potholes that would test any car's springs. Through mud and water on unmade roads. And then a minute examination. The course was so tough that tyres which normally last 20,000 miles last only 5,000 miles. Exhaustive tests have disclosed no flaws, so at Fisherman's Bend they get ready for mass production. Mass production means speed, so watch this engine grow. In the foundry, cylinder blocks, cylinder heads and other items are cut. This is the beginning of a car whose production will employ 9,000 Australians. Cylinder blocks move from the casting line to this Ingersoll special milling machine and are milled automatically. In the machine shop, vertical cylinder boring machines assure perfect alignment by boring six cylinders at once. And it takes just 30 seconds. Another 20 seconds and connecting rods are drilled and reamed. It's impossible to show every operation in this precision job for hundreds of parts go to make one car. The crankshaft must be balanced to the finest limits in this mass centering and balancing machine. Crankshaft bearings receive their final touches in this Gishalt super finisher. We've certainly come a long way from the horse and buggy days. And when you hear that dreadful grating as some novice driver changes gear, just remember the trouble technicians take to make sure it doesn't happen. This car will have synchro mesh gears. Tolerance on the crown wheel and pinion is five ten thousandths of an inch. Tooth profiles on transmission gears are checked to an accuracy of one ten thousandth of an inch. Science has come to stay in the Australian motor car industry. End flanges are electrically welded to axle housings, while in another part of this vast plant, tests are made on the all-important components of the ignition system. The carburetor flow bench, sensitive apparatus for establishing the best fuel-air ratio for economy and good engine operation. Tests over a 600-mile course at an average speed of 35 miles an hour showed 37 miles to the gallon. Engines are run up to 1,200 revolutions for 45 minutes to check final adjustments. Nothing is left to chance. Everything is tested for strength and accuracy. The engine is ready, and in the 29-acre plant at Woodville, South Australia, bodies for Australia's first car are being mass-produced. Here, too, the accent is on accuracy and detail. Windows must run smoothly, so they're closely checked. And a car built for any Australian road, there can be no doubt about the springs. Radiators are subjected to vibration tests to search for any defects. And special consideration is given to that bugbear of all motorists, the door. Locks and hinges are tested mechanically for weeks on end. This apparatus simulates the wear seats and springs will receive in operation. And now the body itself. Dyes are machined by this Keller duplicating machine, and in the sheet metal preparation shop, raw steel blanks are cut by rotary shears ready for the presses. After dyes are machined, they're loaded into these presses, each before.